Welcome back to the Conscious Report. It's been about a month now since I've spoke to you guys through the video camera. Been doing a lot of radio reports and also doing more focusing on myself lately, so I haven't been doing as much time in front of the camera, but it's time to get back out of here and to bring some message of uh, conscious resistance to you guys. So I have something special that I'd like to talk about for this report. I think we're on number 23. 23. This is basically a brief summary of an essay that I wrote that is on my website, theconsciousresistance.com, called Consistency, from Siddhartha Gautama to Samuel Konkin III. And let me just start this by telling you that in the past week I have self-imposed an exile of myself away from Facebook and the majority of the internet and also uh, a lot of actors activities to try to reconnect with myself because I've been finding myself lost amongst all the, uh, the chaos, so to speak. A lot of good things are happening in the Freethinker world and in my own life, but I haven't been doing a lot of the internal work that I speak to you about and how important it is to do that work. You know, I tell you this through my radio show and we talk about this on videos. And I figured this essay would be a good, a good way to kind of bring these ideas out and to personalize it myself. Um, so briefly, I want to go over that a little bit and hopefully you can check the link below and read the full essay and leave your comments and let me know what you think because this is going to be also the majority of what I speak about at an event in New York on 420 called Anarchy in the NYC that is taking place in the NYC that I was blessed enough to be asked to speak speak at alongside Adam Kokesh, Stephen Molyneux, Danny Penzel, John Bush and tons of other great people but if you're a fan of my work or if you've been paying attention to what I do, then you know that my activism deals with the understanding of the philosophy of anarchy and uh, liberty and coupling that with spirituality and shamanism, Zen, Buddhism, meditation, uh, Taoism, all these different ways that we can connect and find our own nature, reconnect to our true nature, which I believe is going to truly create the uh, free society we're working towards. So. I'm going to get into this. Um, now, this is the message of consistency. So let's start with this quote from Samuel Konkin III on, from the New Libertarian Manifesto. This says, The basic principle which leads a libertarian from statism to his free society is the same which the founders of libertarian used to discover the theory itself. This principle is consistency. Thus, the consistent application of the theory of libertarianism to every action the individual libertarian takes creates the libertarian society. So, I take that idea of consistency, and even if you remove the ideas of libertarianism, if you don't believe in that, or if you know, you're afraid of that word, or whatever, if you're not even politically aware, just taking the ideas of consistency and extrapolating it from there, beyond politics, beyond just that, and how important it is for us to be consistent in our actions. Now, we know that statists, are very consistent. You know, they say one thing uh, about principles, but then their actions show another thing. So at the very least, we can count on status to be consistent in their statism. Whatever it is that you're doing, I guess the message here is to be consistent with it. And if your goal is to create a more free society, then we have to be consistent in the way that we apply that. You know, Konkin, he speaks on that. He says that apply libertarian values, which I'm specifically talking about um, the non-aggression principle the idea of self-rule, uh, voluntaries of building communities, these ideas, that that starts with the individual. It starts from within, within you. You have to help, you know, raise your awareness of the situation taking place around the world, why the state is a negative thing and how we can evolve past that. But my premise here is basically that if we do that only in the physical world, in the physical sense, we, we will be in the same place we are now um, in about 100 or 200 years, because without that internal, deeper work that is, that is necessary, you know, we're still going to end up back in the same position. You may understand why it's important to, to not aggress on people, and uh, the importance of geopolitics and the state and how to break that down, but maybe you're also still filled with ego, and I know it's kind of a, a weird idea to think that anarchists have ego, you know, somebody who says they don't want anybody to rule over them, there's no ego there. Right? But I do sense a lot of people, you know, sometimes in myself and in others, where there's this sort of typical anarchist phrase, uh, no gods, no masters. 
And I prefer all gods, no masters, which is to say that we are all gods in the sense that we are all creators of our own uh, subjective reality. And we can decide what we, what we create and what we put out. Now, um, I go a little bit further here and go into somebody else who also discussed uh, consistency. And that is Siddhartha Gautama, also known as the Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. Now, Siddhartha spoke on the necessity and the need for that internal work, for meditation, for mindfulness, to become more self-aware so that we can progress, so that we can eliminate suffering in our lives. So what he said was to watch your thoughts, because your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your behavior, and your behavior becomes your destiny. So literally, what I'm taking from that, and what I see is that what he's saying is, what you think happens, you know, if you were programming yourself in negative, uh, in negative ways, that becomes your behavior, and we recognize this in ourselves, I, mean, I, I personally do, so perhaps you can identify with that as well, and think about it, you know, back to the political side of things, if you're constantly programming yourself to believe that the state is the answer, that the state is the only way for us to move forward, then when you try to take action, when you see something wrong in the world, what is going to be your first response? Let's go to the state to fix it, right? And in the same vein, if you have constantly programmed yourself to believe that um, nobody likes you, or that your ideas aren't worth anything, or whatever sort of doubts and limits that we set on ourselves, that we self-impose, these false models that we buy into in the political world and in the internal, spiritual, intellectual, uh, mental world, those become your reality. So what I'm getting at here is be consistent. Be consistent in your, uh, your belief in the non-aggression principle, your belief in compassion, your belief in self-rule, and awareness. We need to couple these ideas together because I fear that without a truly deeper evolution of the hearts, minds, and the soul, so to speak, that we won't be going all the way. And this is, this is what the state plays off of. This is what the ruling class plays off of. They play off individuals who have been divided, who don't believe in themselves, who are doubtful, and don't understand their true potential. But the second that you wake up and realize how beautiful of a creature that you are, of a human being, and the, the potential that lies within all of us, and you start to you know, get through those deeper issues and, and let go of, of those doubts and fears, which I'm personally working on now, I'm spending more time, because it's important to do those things. And once you start to do those things, it makes it easier for you to see that same potential and that same beauty in others around you. And then they start to see it themselves. And then it just, you know, it's a domino effect. It continues and it continues. And the awakening literally grows every day. So in my effort to do that, I'm getting back to my everyday morning meditation practice. I'm getting back to mindfulness, to exercising, to just detoxing from certain things and to eating better. And it's important. Maybe, you know, this seems kind of like a silly hippie idea to you or something like that, but we need to move past these, these boxes, these false models, these judgments that we've placed on each other. We need to recognize that if you see that the only way we can bring about change in the physical realm is by focusing on ourselves and by everyone uh, providing society with an improved unit, as Albert J. Nock put it, then take that further. Go deeper into yourself and recognize that we can only evolve the species in the, the internal world as well by working on those things, by providing society with one more improved unit who has taken the time to look into themselves. So I hope you'll take a few minutes to read the essay and share it if you like it. These essays are going to be ongoing on my website, theconsciousresistance.com, and also on John Goodvibe's website, The Alchemy of the Modern Renaissance. Me and John are working on a book eventually that will be released. We're going to compile these essays dealing with agorism, anarchy, self-rule, on one hand, and the connection between spiritual practices, shamanism, Buddhism, uh, Taoism, and how we need a synthesis of this to fully evolve ourselves. So I hope you will take a look at that, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are below. As always, if you can see this, you are the resistance.